Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast. Get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome Brett Mollard. He's a radiologist and his Kevin MD article is titled, How AI is Enhancing Patient Care and Improving Radiologists' Lives. Brett, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you having me on. We'll get into your article in a little bit. First off, briefly share your story and journey to where you are today. Sure. So I'm a diagnostic radiologist. I did my residency at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I was chief resident there. I ended up doing a dual diagnostic radiology and nuclear medicine residency program with switching of our boards. We were able to do that. And then I subsequently went to San Francisco and did an abdominal imaging fellowship at University of California, San Francisco, after which I went into private practice and I've been in private practice for seven years now. All right. So How's radiology been? Tell us about some of the rewards and challenges facing the field today. Sure. It's been a very interesting journey, I would say. So some of the the biggest rewards are when we find new cancers, we diagnose things that could be like subtle. So for example, if someone has is involved in like a motor vehicle collision and we find a subtle traumatic injury that requires going to the OR, those are kind of the things that are like the, the big wins and the most fulfilling. Also seeing patients that respond well to chemotherapy and stuff like that when they have cancer. It's nice to see those positive responses. But really, I'd say one of the biggest fulfilling things, most fulfilling things is when we are able to diagnose curable cancer. So for example, if I can see like a subtle pancreatic mass that puts the person to the 5% that survive versus the 95% that don't, those are kind of like the big wins. As for challenges with across like the medical healthcare industry as a whole, essentially we have growing backlogs. We have a lot of Retiring physicians, as we all know, we have an aging patient population, but that also means we have an aging physician population, and that results in a lot of imaging with fewer radiologists to read the studies. So burnout is always an issue. It's been growing since pre-COVID, kind of got worse with COVID, and is still kind of getting a little bit worse right now with a lot of people have exited the, the healthcare industry. So those are kind of the main challenges right now, which kind of leads to my article down the road too. So we have medical students who listen to this podcast. So if they have an interest in radiology as a medical student, what would you tell them? So I have a couple articles in my blog for that. So that's a great question. The most important thing is just get exposure. Make sure it's something you're interested in. In medical school, radiology is one of those specialties that you don't really get access to. You you will see a little bit when you're doing internal medicine and general surgery, but you don't really get your feet that wet. So I would say do a radiology rotation or even just wander down to radiology, pick their brains, ask them, see what their life is like. And then if you want to go into radiology, just show engagement, do some research projects, and take some rotations. And once you're doing some rotations, they'll be able to give you some opportunities of getting more involved. All right. Let's talk about your Kevin MD article. As you know, AI has been in the forefront, especially in medicine, healthcare, super interested in hearing your perspective on how it's going to affect radiology. Your Kevin MD article is titled, How AI is Enhancing Patient Care and Improving Radiologists' Lives. So tell us, how did your article come together? So it kind of started off organically. As you mentioned, AI is in the news and in conversations all the time nowadays and always talking about how it's gonna change things. I I think healthcare is a great thing for AI just because it's pattern recognition, it's following algorithms, radiology is similar with image interpretation and stuff too. Like there are deep learning platforms out there that can analyze thousands of studies that have diagnoses. And so I know like Stanford, for example, has some programs that they've worked on that can kind of read chest X-rays, they can diagnose appendicitis. So there's just with, we have all of the imaging out there. So we have the pictures and then we have, you know, surgical proof, we have pathology. So there's just all the information out there for algorithms to learn how to read studies. They're not going to be perfect necessarily, but I think they are going to make a big impact to essentially what we do. And then there's a lot of other ways that AI can essentially make us more efficient, more accurate, and just better radiologists overall. And the efficiency is going to be important because as I alluded to before, we have these bad backlogs. They're going to continue to build as the patient population ages and our physician population retires out. So we're going to need to be able to work more efficiently to provide excellent care. So what's the current state of AI? So we have these generative AI models like Google Bard and ChatGBT. So give us some practical examples or stories of right now, how is AI helping your daily life? Sure. So essentially 
I like to look at it as like the exponential curve. Right now, we're still on like the low part of the exponential curve. It's going to explode over the next few like decade or so. But AI has kind of entered radiology already over the past probably five or 10 years. It's kind of been trickling in. One example is workflow and workless automation. So for as a radiologist, trying to figure out what study to read next is wasteful. It's time consuming. And I might make you know the wrong decision because I don't see the next ER case. So that's like one area where it already exists. There's already that technology there where it can prioritize your workflow where you put in all the different key parameters. So I know my ER turnaround time is 60 minutes or the inpatient turnaround is one hour, two hour, four hours. And it can organize our workflow to ensure that we're reading the next case and appropriately. So that way, some cases aren't going to linger for too long and we can make sure we get to it at a reasonable fashion. There are some other ones that are quite nice as a radiologist. This is not something that most people will benefit from, but one example, I read a lot of cancer staging and restaging for the restaging. We're always comparing like a nodule today to a nodule from three months ago or six months ago. And instead of having to scroll on both series to find that nodule, there's some software that automatically links the different studies. And so I just scroll one of them and the other one automatically scrolls. And then that nodule or that liver mass is going to be within probably like one to three slices. So it just, that makes it a little bit more efficient. It makes it so radiologists will be more inclined to do probably accurate measurements because it does give them that little bit of extra time where they'll feel a little bit less crunch. So those are some of the, the big things. So you mentioned that in radiology, of course, pattern recognition and algorithms play a role in terms of your reading. So how good is AI in terms of doing preliminary reads? Are we there yet in terms of AI doing some preliminary reads? Yeah, so that's in very early stages. Right now, there are tons of companies like startups that are creating s- solutions. Um, there are some that are offering pneumothorax detection and some various chest x-ray detection. So there is some commercial stuff out there right now. As for how good it is, I haven't tested that out yet. I, I think then we can discuss barriers down the road, but that's going to be one of the barriers is for clinicians to feel comfortable using AI. And then one of the other issues too, is you don't want to become too dependent on AI. So for example, if I'm, if it says, you know, there's no pneumothorax, maybe I'm not going to look as closely for a pneumothorax on that study. Whereas I'll have to remind myself, I have to look at the apices and make sure I'm looking for a pneumothorax closely on every single study, but there is some stuff out there. It's still very early on. Again, we're at the bottom of that exponential curve, but it's going to explode. I know like the, for the Stanford's stuff that I mentioned a little bit earlier, they've been working on this for a while. They've been doing this for probably at least five or 10 years. And I think once stuff comes kind of a little bit more out of Stanford where, or other academic centers, there'll be more trust from the community to adopt it. One of the barriers, right? Like I was alluding to is just to adopt something that's going to affect patient care. We have to be pretty comfortable that it's not going to negatively impact patient care as well. I do internal medicine, primary care. I use these generative AI the tools to, to help me write my notes. Now, is there a same role in radiology in terms of generating your reports, in terms of using AI to assist you? Thank you for bringing that up. So in my article, I do mention this a little bit too. There's something called Rad AI that we use. And essentially what it does is it reads our radiology report after we dictate it. And then when we create our impression, it reads our report and then it'll dictate or it'll create an impression based on our report. It's not perfect, but it does save a ton of time. It helps for at least me personally. It makes me more efficient. It does put stuff in the impression that I may have forgotten because maybe I've, you know, got interrupted three or four times during that study, or it was a really complex study with 10, 15 different things going on. So it, it helps with reminding with that. And it, sometimes can help with diagnosis. I've been surprised by some of the impressive calls that it's made, but there's also sometimes where it's a little bit less impressive. Again, that's still early on, but I think we're going to see a lot of benefit from that. And again, we have the benefit of there are millions of radiology reports that it can review. It also can learn from you too. So it can read a thousand of my reports and then see how I like to dictate things. And then the impression I've noticed has evolved over time to sound a little bit more like how I dictate. So let's talk about steps going forward in terms of trends that you see. So right now you mentioned that we are early on in that exponential curve. Do you see a point where AI can replace radiologists? Do you see that your job eventually becoming under threat because of the improvements AI will have? 
That's one of my favorite questions. I, I don't think anytime soon, never say never, but I, I feel like we have a couple decades before it gets to that point. Um, there's a couple pieces of that one there they are super early i know this stuff is going to go up exponentially but it's so early on in the process and another thing is all of these different ai tools are all piecemeal one company has mm -hmm. this little niche another company has this little niche and so for it to come get to that point essentially all somebody's gonna have to either buy up all of those companies or they're gonna have to work together to be able to do something that replaces us so i, I think we're several decades off before that would happen if ever Another thing that we kind of have going for us, this is a little sarcastic, but I don't think those companies want the liability. So I don't think they'll want to be sued if their AI software misses stuff because it is going to miss stuff. You can talk to an amazing radiologist who's 30, 40 years in their career, and they still see new stuff every day. So, and a lot of things can present many different ways where it just, you'll see a new presentation of a common thing that you've never seen before in your 30 year career. So I, I think between all of those things, we'll probably be safe. It's probably more profitable for the companies also just to have a continuous subscription service rather than have to be in charge and take ownership of the imaging interpretation. For anyone that is overly concerned about that, there's always interventional radiology in MAMO. Breast imagers do biopsies. IR docs do things that robots would be required to do. And we're a long way from that. So when in doubt, you can always do interventional radiology. They still frequently read a lot of diagnostic. So that's always the safest thing is just do interventional radiology. But I think we're going to be safe. We're talking to Brett Mahler. He's a radiologist. His Kevin MD article is titled, How AI is Enhancing Patient Care and Improving Radiologists' Lives. So Brett, for those radiology residents or even current radiologists, how can they prepare themselves today for what is sure to be a little bit more of an AI infiltrated world going forward? That's a great, that's a great question. So I've, I've been thinking about this actually a little bit, just kind of like when you're talking about like Bard, chat GPT, those things, like it's going to change if someone is in, you know, a writing class, if they're using those to write, they're not really necessarily learning how to write. They're going to be too reliant on the AI. So I think that's kind of a similar analogy is we still want people like residents to dictate their own impressions. We're still going to want like residents to go through that process themselves, just so they're not going to be overly reliant on, on AI, but we do want to give them the exposure. So that way, when they go out into the real world, they're aware of it, they're familiar with it, and they'll be able to incorporate it into their practice. So I think we don't want them to use it as a crutch, but we want them to be familiar with it. So that way they can integrate it into their, their reading. And my final question, tell us some of your take home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin and the audience. Sure. So I th think with the, the biggest take home message that I have is I think we need to be open to AI. I know there's going to be a lot of resilience allowing it to enter healthcare, but I think for the most part, it's just going to benefit us. And we are going to have that crunch. Burnout is already at a very high level. I know you've had some people talk about burnout on the podcast and with the aging population, the aging physicians, it's just going to be more in more stress on the healthcare field. And so really the only thing I think that we can do is hope that AI technologies and solutions are going to come out that are going to make us able to do our job more efficiently. If there's AI that will allow you to do paperwork faster, for example, or Epic notes faster, like you were talking about with your dictations, that's going to allow us to do more of what we actually train to do, which is medicine and patient care. And hopefully that stuff will become a little bit more passive. So the biggest thing is be open to it. I kind of like the trust, but verify. So mm -hmm. don't just go in, you know, head first, make sure everything is vetted, testing out, always do a trial before purchasing something. So that way you can see if you like it, if it meets your standards. But the main thing I would say is just be open to it and give it a try, because I think we're going to be reliant on it in the future. Brad, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thank you so much.